Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fangame Marathon. Hi, Wolsk. Hello, I'm I'm popping in. We've got some commentary that we're going to be doing for a race of I Want to Be the Blizzard. Cosmo and I doing commentary for Let Create an R&D Guy. Uh, this is a okay. game by Carnival that is heavily Celeste inspired. So we just came from a Celeste uh, a, a custom map task. And now we're going to be doing a Celeste I Want to Be the Guy fan game. So. That's that's all true. It's actually yeah. all true. And and I I'd imagine they may say a couple words, but for the most part, it's just going to be Cosmo and I talking. So, yeah, yeah, not going to mm. be talking a lot for for this race because it's a race. Yeah, but yeah, we're still going to be doing hard. most of the commentary, and there's also going to be a few. Uh, skips and tricks all throughout the run and stuff like that. So it's going to be really cool. Yeah, this is a pretty good game if you haven't seen it before. It's got nice production value, and of course, Carnival is known for making classic oh, adventure sh- fan games. So it's. Uh... Uh, I closed the game by accident. Uh, that's my bad. I'm sorry. All right, and thank you everyone for joining the race. We'll see you in the next run. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Peace. No, 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 no. Sorry, my bad. For, for, to clarify in chat, the estimate is 21 minutes. Uh, if you look at um, Hararo, Hararo times are a little weird. For um, for Hararo reasons. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it adds the setup time to, to the run time, which is like, which is by default 10 minutes, so that's why the discrepancy. Yeah, we can assure you we've checked through all of the estimates on everything and they're correct on the overlay. So, Hararo is not necessarily going to be the correct estimates for things where there's ones with longer setup somewhere. Uh, but we need to do that to get it to be matching up with Angus's times. But we prefer how Hararo looks and the fact that we can add links and stuff, so that's our preferred site. And that runs in 41 minutes? I mean, that's correct. It's because we're a bit ahead of schedule, too. Anyway. Yeah, this run's supposed to start in about f- four minutes, technically. So. Check, and check. instead, it's going to start in <laughs> five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, go. And good luck to both of the racers. Yep. It's going to be a very juicy race. I'm pretty sure with both of these guys. Yeah, this game is, um, it was made for the Iwana Olympic, which was a tournament. Um, I believe it was for the Japanese community. Um, but other people were able to join. Basically, they had a whole bunch of blind games and, uh, other stuff shown. And, uh, it was, it was in supposed to be an Olympic format. So there were tons of different genres of fan games that you could play. Um, and based on how you scored in each kind of game in that list, it would uh, give you a certain amount of rank points. And uh, the people with the highest overall points uh, would be, they would actually get prizes. So it was one of like the only, I want to be the guy, um, competitions in general that had any sort of reward system. The, uh, the I want a tourney. Wait, did I call it the I Want a Tourney before? I might have messed up. Mm. No, it was for the I Want a Olympic. Time. No, you said okay. Olympic the first time. Alright, cool. So it's for the Olympic, and the I Want a Tourney was uh, actually heavily inspired by it. So if you know what that was, uh, that was actually the reason that Aris decided to have prizes for it, so... Yeah, Dorpy does quite a lot of stuff for um, just events on the eastern side of the community. Uh, very much an inspiration. Alright, so to explain the basic mechanics, if you do not know Celeste mechanics, uh, it's pretty simple. You have the blocks that when you touch them, they'll move. You have springs that bounce you up. You have switches that will activate something. There are breakable blocks. There are spikes that fall. And those uh, turquoise crystal things are jump refreshers. 
Um, you will later see another mechanic that you can recognize from Celeste if you know it. Uh, but as you can see, both of these runners are doing quite well. Both of them are on the first boss already. Um, they also, if I recall correctly, there's an intentional death that's taken on the boss that puts the boss on like a certain cycle that makes it faster. Yeah, that definitely looked like a lot more damage than what I would normally get without taking a death there. So I can see why they're doing it. Yeah, it has been a while since I, I saw like the record, but I'm pretty sure that is the strat they use. Yeah. And Luck Create there gets the fast kill. RND guy took two teleports there. Alright, so now we've got another new mechanic. This is the bubble from Celeste. Basically, uh, when you get in it, you hold a direction. It goes in eight different directions. And uh, based on which way you're pressing, that will determine how you'll fly through the screens. And uh, some of the times, they'll just completely ignore the bubbles. Other times, they'll have to save it for later. Other times, they'll reuse them. Because this game is a trap game, very much so. So occasionally, there will be things that will kill you, like perhaps... Uh, something at the end of a screen that falls down that makes you have to go sideways with a bubble instead of straight up. Or just some spikes that decide to come out of a wall. Yep. It is probably one of the least um, trap-heavy games. Well, trap-trap... Trap-heavy... I thought that was right. Trap-heavy games from this maker. Yeah. Very well known for having games which quite a lot of traps per se and not being very nice to the player at all and honestly this one you get like what I think two traps per save at most mm -hmm. really not that bad so this is a cool screen uh, this one's a little bit confusing um, basically you have to hit the buttons in a certain order that lets you not die to the spikes and then shoot the button while you're on the right side to retract one of the final red spikes. If you do it too early, you'll just die to the one in the middle. Oh yeah, and another new mechanic, in case you haven't already noticed it, is uh, platforms that when you're on them, they will fall down. <laughs> Let create getting the uh, wrecking ball thing skip. You go underneath it, normally you would oh, jump out to beautiful. the left. And doing another nice skip going over the top of it. R&D going for the uh, spike ball skip as well and going uh, even faster rather than waiting. He just ran straight under and getting the one right after. So both of these runners are doing incredibly well. Yeah, this was, um, I mean, as I said earlier, this was actually made for a speedrun event in particular. And uh, Dorothy, I believe, uh, did a stream after the event, showcasing pretty much all the strats that he himself found. And so there's a pretty nice kind of beginner guide to the speedrun, in a way. And, uh, yeah, Dorpy's no slouch. There's quite a lot you can find from that. So this screen's an interesting one. You climb all the way up to the top. And, uh, oh, doing like a, a bonk ledge skip kind of thing. But you go to the top to uh, shoot a spike down, and uh, shooting that spike down will get you to be able to go back up. Because if you go up too early, you'll just die straight to the spike. Bit, bit of a funny. Oh, both players. Boss. Yep, both players in the second boss. You can definitely some see some ins mm -hmm. inspiration from Undertale. Oh yeah. So uh, it's got the uh, the strings up and down from Muffet, the spider boss, but it also has the like box with the spikes on it, which is reminiscent of Mr. Sands himself. Great damage there, boss, from both players. Yeah. Ooh. A, a bit rougher RNG again from R&D taking three teleports, but... Not a big loss. So a new Celeste gimmick. Well, that's a bit, um... Actually, there's a whole bunch of new Celeste gimmicks in this stage. I forgot. Yep. Uh, so the first one is... Well, in Celeste, it's a dash swap block. I, I don't remember the exact name, but basically when you dash, the block moves. Here, it's when you double jump, the block moves. 
Um, and uh, again, for Celeste people, uh, they may remember T Theo? Theo? Theo. Theo. There we go. Um, it was just a person trapped in an ice cube that you can sort of carry around and throw around. And you can activate a whole bunch of switches with him, as you can see. A big difference in this game versus Celeste is that if Theo dies, you don't immediately lose. Um, but I believe he will not respawn. I No, I do think he respawns, actually. Alright. I believe he... Yeah, he respawns. I'm a fool. But, because of that, uh, you'll use it for a little bit of puzzles, which isn't necessarily how he would be used in Celeste, because it works just slightly differently in this game. There's also those uh, pink crystals, which... Uh, it's, they're, they're, I, know, I know that some of them will make it so you like don't get a jump, or like take away a jump, but I think those ones down below also kill you. So I don't know if there's like a difference in the color that I'm not noticing. Or maybe they just always kill you. Do you remember it all? I'm trying to remember. I'm also trying to realize what you said because I'm EP. Perfect. So there's also the uh, pink switches, which can be activated by Theo. Uh, they're much like the key things in Celeste. Okay, yeah, I think I think it's just the pink crystals kill you. Yeah. The pink jump refresher ones. Funny explosion moment. I do think they explode, right? I mean, I guess we probably won't see it, but... Do they? Oh, yeah, they might. They probably do. Both players are uh, pretty close now. Uh, but yeah, once you activate all of the uh, the switches with the exclamation marks, that'll open up a new area. So you're hitting all of the triggers and activating them. And you can see it's kind of swapping between two tile sets a bunch. I don't know if there's any particular reason for that. It's like... Past and future, like, glyph. Yeah, I mean, I, I, first time playing through, I thought it was like, you know, like, the final stage flashback kind of thing. Um, however, this is just not the final stage. <laughs> so, who knows? Right, you can see there is a 16 pixel gap skip there. Normally you would uh, run out to the left and just go down, but that's a very intentional skip that lets you get in between a tiny little crevice. 16 pixel gap being a space that is two frames of leeway regardless of what a line you have. And now we have a very clear uh, cave story reference. If you've played cave story, there's a section I was going to say near the end, I guess it's still near the end, where you climb up a really long tower uh, to get to the plantation. And uh, this has very, very strong inspiration from that. When you reach the summit here, you get to the next boss, a double boss, which actually could also be another uh, Cave Story reference. I'm not confident in that, but there is a boss in Cave Story uh, approaching that section where you fight two dragons at once that they rotate around you one on each side oh, I do wonder yeah that could be all right both runners now onto the final stage so now they're in the core uh unlike uh Celeste where the core would make it so you can't dash or you don't get dashes back on the screen once you use it uh, this works just normally, you're still playing just jump and double jump, and it doesn't take it away from that. But you do have the spinning fireballs, which is extremely reminiscent, reminiscent of the core, which is all about uh, cycles and things moving around a bunch. Yeah, and of course you do have the lava, and later on you'll also get the ice 
and the, the switches back and forth. Actually, I don't remember. Are there switches back and forth? I actually don't remember. Um, might, might just switch once. Yeah, I think it might just switch once. Um, but it also has the timing blocks, which is uh, another Celeste thing. You can you can tell there's a little bit of Celeste inspiration. Eh, just a little itty witty bit. But the blocks go back and forth on a timer, and uh, you have to time it. Hence the name. Um, there's also uh, an addition of the free flying bubbles, which are the equivalent of the feather. Um, and there is, uh, what was that other mechanic that like just happened? I'm sure, we'll see um, it again. Uh, 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 uh. Even the the blocks that like the retaliation blocks. Yep, that's the one. Yeah, breakable blocks, but they get angry when you do that to them. Oh, that would have been a nice skip. Yeah, you can see on Let Create side, you got the skip. R&D guy unfortunately took a death, um, but immediately going up with the feather bubble, grabbing Theo early. That's a great run from both players so far, honestly. Yeah, this is a solid race. Well underestimate for sure. So this screen's cool. Um, when we're saying this, it's probably delayed from the stream, but uh, you can see they actually uh, jump up the blocks. So rather than going all the way around, uh, much like Celeste, when you are inside of these blocks, when they flip, they won't like kill you, they won't get you stuck inside, but they'll wait until you leave. Um, however, these work a little bit differently in that long vertical line um, it actually goes upwards, essentially. So wherever you get into it, once you get out, it'll only do the ones below it. So uh, you can climb up by just jumping straight up and going through. Didn't think you could stand next to those. Good skip. Got a funny screen there. Uh, if you hold right through that screen transition, you'll just smack straight into a wall of spikes. So the players uh, destroy the block, then intentionally have the bubble just knock them out. The biggest change in this screen, or in this stage, is that now you have water instead of lava. And it's blue. And also, this screen has a skip where you can do a diagonal. It's kind of a buffed diagonal. Um, both players doing it, no problem at all both on the final boss, so this is going to be incredibly close. Uh, it'll it'll really come down to who kills the boss faster, because R&D guy was having some slower boss kills than Let Create, but Let Create is a little bit behind, so this could be incredibly close in the end. Yeah. This is, uh, any death will have tell the race. And once again, this is very clearly inspired by uh, Undertale Sans boss. Um, so it has, like, sections where you'll just jump in and do, like, a, a quick dodge pattern. And then it'll transition to something else. You could see before there were yellow and blue stars exploding. The yellow stars will target straight at you with smaller ones. The blue ones will target around you. So you have to be careful and make sure you're, you're paying attention to which color they are. Really, this is just a long avoidance phase, and then once they get through this, then they reach the shoot phase where they're up top on the platforms. And that was it. Time. All right, and that's a uh, that's a win for R and D guy <laughs> with Radical. Let Create coming right behind yeah within 10 seconds of each other wow i couldn't get the times to show up on stream but it was uh rnd guy had like a 16 18 or so and uh, luck create had a 16 25. that was <laughs> extremely close for a race well done to both of the runners very very good stuff
And Blizzard is a... I think I call it a fantastic, like, beginner game nowadays. Mm. Very, very accessible. I mean, honestly, a lot of people have played Celeste nowadays, so it's a great way to get into fan games. Pretty easy. Not too long. Be great aware stuff. that if you're not a fan of traps, it definitely has some. Like, it, it's not oh, as much yeah. as other carnival games, but, like, you'll be killed at the end of multiple saves quite often. So. Oh, yeah. Easily. Anything either yeah, of the Oh yeah, we guess so. Well played. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a really awesome race and congrats to Rengai for winning the race. Thank you very really, much. Really close to one. Hmm. It's a... <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you played really well. You did too. Hey. No, was getting the live commentary. Hearing how close you were every single time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was almost thinking when we were doing this that we should be in like a separate call because of that, but <laughs> it probably adds to the fun. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I waited until the, the run was over. So, just... <laughs> mm. Yeah, is there anything else either of you would be able to show off in the game? I don't know if there's like any specific traps or something. I mean, I the only thing I can think of is like touching a pink crystal, but ultimately, like I don't, I can't uh, think of. Much. I mean, the, the pink crystals do do kill you. Like they, uh, you touch them and they explode and they kill you. Okay. Explosion. Yeah, yeah, I got there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I've, I've played too much Heartbeats. Stop the Heartbeats is uh, another Celeste stage, but it has pink crystals that just don't give you a jump back. Oh, excellent. Alright, so let's check those death counts. You can see Rand Guy on the right with 8 deaths, and uh, Let Create we will see shortly. Uh, Theoretically. Uh, I don't know how to see my death count. <laughs> I'm on the live game Windows screen. 14, though. On the Windows 6 14, though. 14 deaths versus 8 deaths, yeah. Wow. It's okay. it's crazy seeing, you know, almost double the death count with how close that was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, at least half of those were from uh, when I was trying to do a skip on one of the screen scenes, stage 3. When I, I really struggled. Oh, that, that one. one. Yeah, I think half of my deaths up on that as well. It's still a uh, 16 congrats. pixel on the left, right? With the cube for. Actually, actually, she's doing a selfie. She's actually doing a, a selfie. Lore. Well, uh, do either of you have anything you'd like to add before we move on to setting up the blind adventure? Uh, yeah, I think I'm really looking forward to the, the adventure block. Uh, so not the adventure block, the, the, the <laughs> blind adventure race, sorry. Not a race either. Uh, <laughs> blind okay, adventure blind, event. The, the... A friendly jog, everyone's hands joined yes. together. <laughs> And yeah, I definitely recommend the like if you never played and wanna be the guy game before, or if you're just starting out, this is definitely one of the ones I would recommend. Mm. Uh, it's really oh, fun. Sure. Trust me. It's been a, been such fun just playing this, and then there's like so many little gimmicks and little things that you can find, little optimizations for little par things and all that kind of stuff. I really enjoyed yeah, it's this. A neat yeah. Game. Like, yeah, we uh, Ranga and I actually spent the last couple of months just brainstorming, finding tricks, yeah. and 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 yeah, he he found he found the the wall jump, but not wall jump, but the wall clip thing by by accident. He didn't recreate it, and we both figure out how it works from there. Um, um it's unfortunate that uh, uh, we don't get to see it in the in this run. Uh, I think. There is a I do have a video on my YouTube channel where I showcase uh one of the only usable spots we were able to find 
but again, it's stupidly precise. Definitely not race friendly. Literal marathon race friendly. So, oh, sure. so yeah. So yeah. So 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 you can check that out. Uh, if if you please, I mean, if you wish. Sorry. And and yeah. All right. And yeah, that, that's that's what I wanna be the Blizzard. Really good one. It's been a real fun race. Uh, thank you, Fan Game Marathon and Cos Moon Worlds and and all the other people who made this possible for making it possible. Yeah, thanks, thanks, everybody. Everyone. Have a good one. See you in the next run. Yeah. See you. Thank you, both of the runners. That was, again, a fantastic race. Up next, as mentioned, we have the I Want to Be the Guy Blind Adventure event with the classic scoundrels with a twist. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. We'll be back shortly.